It's a primary apple tree they planted here. You can see the damage the rabbits have done to it. They've nearly ring barked it the whole way around. The branches here, that's probably about 14 inches off the ground and they're still capable of reaching that by standing up on their hind legs. Other trees here that got damaged when they were planted years ago by rabbits as well. The tree has grown through it but it's suffered from the damage of rabbits. Took the lower branches off this one to try and stop it. Yeah, and this one chewed out by rabbits. Some of the other trees as well up here in the orchard suffered rabbit damage and they were planted 10 years ago. They managed to overcome it. Same with this one. So, um, it's one of the reasons why I snare rabbits on this property. We're inside the polytunnel that we have here now at the minute. Just after getting through the winter into early spring here now, in the next couple of weeks we'll have all this rid out and get it back to um, a standard that we want for growing veg in throughout the summer into the autumn and then to start the winter and then we lay off again. As you can see over the winter, uh, with the heat that's in here, stuff does still continue to grow. And the rabbits have uh, quite a habit of digging in around the sides or at the end coming in and of course they have a nice tasty meal in here or whatever still growing and who could blame them nice and warm in here uh, some free veg going through the winter a bit of shelter and they're happy out very minimum disturbance up here because we wouldn't be up here really over the winter time so they come and go as they want so we need to try and keep on top of them minimize the damage it's done in here to the plastic. We had them actually got through the plastic in the door down there last year and they actually got in and started burrowing in underneath where we have the, the raised beds. So obviously we couldn't shoot them in here with the air rifle and we couldn't put fen traps down inside here because the kids would be up and down. So we had to use snares to take them out of it. Okay guys, so what I'm going to go through now is the kit and equipment that I use when I'm setting up the rabbit snares and what I make them with. Um, before attempting to snare any animal or control um, any animal, the best thing to do is try and find out as much information about it as you can. Okay, So either online, through books, through DVDs, whatever it is, um, from experience with other people that do it, you're better off being uh, as educated as possible before you tackle the problem so that you know what you're getting into rather than learning from your mistakes on the go you try and minimize the mistakes before you start okay so what i use for them snaring the rabbits first of all starting with the wire i get all my snare supplies regarding rabbit snares from uh 14 acre uh in the uk all right so go to www.14acre.co.uk and you can find the wire the tealers uh the pegs um the eyelets whatever you need to get you up and running okay what I will say as well, if you're looking for a good source of information, DVD there, okay, Rabbit Snaring by Woodja, very good. I knew very, very little about snaring rabbits before I watched this DVD. Um, yes, I'd read a few articles online. Um, I had attempted to snare rabbits before in the past with very, very limited success, okay. If I had got this DVD beforehand, I'm sure I would have been far more successful a lot quicker. This DVD takes you through the whole process of making the snares from your raw coil of wire to the finished product to set them in the field and the showing of the catches. Uh, everything from making the pegs, everything. An excellent watch. Okay, I think it retails for about £25 sterling. I can't recommend this enough. Okay. Another thing that I got as well was this here. Professional rabbit snare okay, by a guy called GS Waters well-renowned trapper he'd done um, a video years ago on snaring and trapping of mink and as soon as I'd seen he'd done this book I definitely made it a priority to get my hands on it it's excellent full of information everything that you need to know okay if you can get your hands on this and this you will not go too far wrong the wire itself it's just a coil of wire. That's the way it comes from 14 acre. Single strand. Okay. If you get that DVD and that book, it'll talk you through the whole process of making the actual six strand snare itself. 
you should finish up with then is your snare loop. Okay, and these aren't finished yet because I have to put the stops on them. The stops I like to use are the same nuts that I use for my stops on my fox snares. Okay, that's a very, very small nut. I think it's like a size four or something like that. It's very small. So even when I snip it, crimp it onto the wire, it has negligible effects on the snare with regard to making the, sm the snare droop. Right. What I will say is something I learned myself. Obviously, if you watch that DVD in that book, they talk about looping the wire one and a half times around the shaft of the tailor. Okay, don't have the loop too tight to each other like this. Okay, don't coil them too close together because what will happen is it won't allow the wire to unravel. Okay, when it unravels, your double knot that's in it will act as your swivel for it to rotate. But if you have them coils of wire too close together okay it won't uncoil and it won't act the way it's supposed to and what will happen is the rabbit will keep turning and turning and turning and turning and eventually he'll snap the wire you land the next day with just your wire broke up here or whatever happens to snap okay so that's just a little something i learned myself when you loop it around it okay give it a little bit of space that can actually unravel All right the tealer supports the snare over the run this is your standard nine inch tailor okay made to the specifications in the dvd and in the book now for longer grass or rough tussocks of grass which there's plenty of around here okay you can set it where the tailor itself is only sitting in the ground about this much and then you can cock the snare up a small bit like that okay you roughly want about six and a half inches from the beat or the the track to the bottom of the snare loop to catch the rabbit all right what i started doing for myself was yes you could cock it up a little bit higher but it just made more sense to me to make it a bigger tealer all right so i've done this myself this is 15 inches overall from the bottom here up to the very top because what i find is in some of the rough areas that i'm snaring on particularly around the rough edges of the golf course where there's no animals grazing it obviously because it's a golf course and it's just an area of ground that's uh, basically dead ground that they've no use for um there's like tussocks of grass that could be a foot to 14 inches high and then the rabbits have made their pathways through them their beats through them and even with this regular size tealer and with the, the snare loop cocked up a small bit and this just holding in the ground a small bit um it isn't too stable okay so i just used the nice long 15 inch tealer that i made okay and just used that and it works perfect for me the makings of the tailors themselves, it's just a simple jig. Put the wire along it, two and a half mil galvanized high tensile wire, and bend them in accordance to what's told in the book and what's told in the DVD. Now I'm not gonna tell you the exact dimensions, okay? That's probably what people want. But I'm not gonna plagiarize their material and pass it off as my own, okay? Obviously they've wrote that book and they've made that DVD with the intentions of getting the information out there, but obviously getting some sort of return on that. So by me coming in here now and telling you all the exact dimensions and, and so on and so forth, um, I'm just undermining the work that they've done and I'm just basically going to be getting the credit for it. And that's not what I'm about. Okay, so they're making the six, six strand snares themselves. There's plenty of DVDs, or, or sorry, plenty of information out there. There's plenty of uh, videos as well of how to spin the snares from the single coil of wire into the finished six strand snare itself. Then how to load them. So how basically you can have your snare returning, you know, if it gets bumped, the snare should reset itself. If a rabbit hits off it, misses it, or a bird flies into it, it reset itself, ready for the next rabbit to come along. Okay. So 14acre.co.uk, you can get that DVD, you can get that book, and I cannot highly recommend them enough. Fantastic watch and a fantastic read. Okay, them guys really know their stuff. For the pegs I use, okay, all I had at the time was I had a load of brush handles here. Um, I don't know what I had them here for, to be quite honest. I think I had them in a, using them in a windbreaker or something like that at one stage when I had the caravan. I used to go away on holidays and I got rid of the caravan anyway and kept the brush handles for some stupid reason. But all I done then was just made them about seven inches long. They're there about to drill the hole through them. Okay, so brush handles are round and why is that square? According to that book, and I'd be a firm believer in anything that's printed in that book, 
that a round peg won't hold in the ground as well as a square peg in wet ground okay so if you get a fence post and you shake around and round and round what will happen is you'll see the fence post will start to turn and it'll start to loosen itself if you have a rabbit caught with a round peg in wet ground and he's going round and round and round that's exactly what's happening the peg is, is rotating and working its way loose whereas if you have a square peg okay it's got more surface contact with the ground it provides a lot more holding power okay so that's what i done simply got brush handles cutting down to the size that i wanted took my trusty little plane into the vise three strokes that way Three that way, three that way, three that way. Squared off the peg as best as I could. Now for the small tealer, again, just have another little jig made up. And away you go. Bend the wire, hold it, clip it, file it, and away you go. Happy days. I'm showing you why I snare rabbits around here. I snare rabbits on the golf course, obviously, because they love the short grass in there. They love the bunkers and they love digging it up, it's a nightmare for the groundskeepers, so I get to go in, I get to hone my skills of snare, I do it free of charge, and I get to keep the rabbits. What do I do with the rabbits? I eat most of them, some of them I give away, and some of them I use then as fox bait. Alright, so that is essentially what you want to be finishing up with. Um, for cordage, for attaching the peg to the snare, I have a full roll of bale and twine. I also use paracord, plenty of it left from various things that do at work. So I use paracord or else I'll use baler twine. Baler twine preferably because you can get it in a massive roll. If you can't get your hands on a massive roll, well then go and ask some farmer who will be more than happy probably to give you any amount that he has lying around his yard from when he takes it off, bales of hay, bales of straw. Even newspapers that are delivered to shops are nine times out of ten tied up with bale and twine. So you can get it. Go into a creamery, go into a co-op. Look for it online, all right? Get it. That's what you use for attaching your pegs to your snares. Okay, so that's the long one. That is the short one. Two and a half mil galvanized wire, high tensile. I'm sure back in the day the popular thing was to use hazel, ash, willow, whatever it was. These can be used over and over again. And they're excellent. You can spray them. I have some here that are black, I have some here that are green and they are fantastic and with that brass wire weathers you will do very well to see them when they're set on a run okay so you set your snare out now how do you find it again the first five or six yes you may find when you start going up into 10 and 20 30 40 50 60 and so on you're going to find it very hard to remember where all your snares are what i simply do is i go to the coffee shop get myself a cup of coffee and the timber stirs the lollipop sticks I take a few of them, obviously, I ask for them. I use them, stick them on the ground, mark the area that I have the snare in. Um, there's loads of other ways you can do it. Branches, twigs, the lollipop stick method, feathers, something that you're going to be able to um, recognize that you have a snare in that location. All right, so that is pretty much the snare setup that I'm using, okay? I know it's vague for some people, they want all the dimensions and all that but I'm just going to end up plagiarizing these guys hard work okay it's not what it's about due credit where it's deserved okay fantastic watch brilliant read plenty of tips and tricks in it okay especially if you're getting snares they're getting knocked tripped um, you wonder why you're not catching like a troubleshooting section in it if you want to call it that all right that's what I use that's what works for me. Like everyone else, there's no real hard and fast rules. You need to be flexible in your approach that you're taking. Be willing to learn and accept where you go wrong. Okay, it's advocated that the bottom of the loop here should be six and a half inches off the ground in normal grass conditions. And every single rabbit, bar one, I've caught round the neck, all right, since I've started doing this for the last couple of months. The reason I didn't catch that one rabbit around the neck was because I used a shop bought snare, which had a very, very small little loop when the, it was opened out. And all it had was green twine tied to the end of it. So I ended up having to cut the twine off, cut about an inch off the bottom of the brass because it wasn't tied properly, and then putting it onto a tailor and left me with a very, very small noose. Very small noose. 
big noose, better chance of catching them. Six and a half inches off ground, normal ground, ground conditions. Then I like to use the longer 15 inch tealer and the likes of a uh, rushy ground that's not grazed and that's what works for me. The other type of tealer that I do have is one that can use on ground that's fairly hard. Right, it's just a single prong, it's a lot easier to push down into the ground. Right, and again, this one has to get a stop put onto it. It's loaded that it'll back up, it'll open again if it gets bumped or knocked in any way. Okay, guys, any questions, feel free to ask them. Right, if I can help you out, I will. I just wish this information was out there when I had been starting first. But that's the importance of researching as much as you can before you start taking stuff on. Right, brilliant. Brilliant. 14acre.co.uk. Okay, you get your brass eyelets. You get your stops if you want them. Or use the little small nuts, like I said. You can buy the coil, uh, coils of wire, different weights. As in, obviously, the heavier the drum of wire, the more snares you can make. Um, you can actually buy the tealers as well, ready made. You can buy the pegs. Standard tealer is only 9.5 inches. Okay, that's the one that you'll buy off theirs. I made up a jig using the same kind of format, but just making it longer to suit the ground I was uh, snaring on. Right, guys, that's it for now. Um, Hope this is some help to you. Any questions, hit me up in the comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as I can.